so welcome back to everybody who's joined us in Namibia for the last two weeks. Um, I think I'll just start, I always like to start with a map because I think it really orientates everybody as to uh, where we are and, and where we're traveling to. I love maps. I can't, I always have to have a map in front of me. So as mentioned before, your flying point would be Vintok. And um, over the la last week, we looked at the southern section of Namibia and we looked at uh, all the different highlights of the southern section of Namibia. Uh, as I think I mentioned last week, and maybe just to summarize again here, um, it's a very large country, Namibia. It's certainly not a country that you can quickly do in a week. Uh, I would definitely suggest a minimum, absolute minimum of two weeks in Namibia. Um, in fact, preferably three if you have the time, but definitely a minimum of, of two weeks. Um, last week, in the, we, we covered the southern section of Namibia, and we think, I think we looked at that in a 10-day itinerary. Um, and this week, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this northern section of Namibia over here, including the Caprivi Strip. Now, I think what I just want to mention um, before we start is I'm going to take you today from Swakopmund, which is where we ended last time. I'm going to take you up to uh, the Damaraland region, which is over here. I'm going to take you into Koaka land over here, and then up to the Kuneni River up north. Then we will go into Etosha National Park, and I will take you across to Rundu, and then into the um, Caprivi Strip over here. So this is not necessarily, this in its own right is an itinerary that you could do in two weeks, just this northern section here. Um, and next week, what I will do is I'll end off by summarizing after we've done the flying safaris, realistically what one can easily do in a two week self-drive trip, trip incorporating the north and the south. So I'm going to start off by um, taking you up to Damara land. Um, so Damara land uh, is about, uh, about a four and a half hour drive from Swakopmund in a northerly direction up to Damara land. Um, this area, this is uh, Mawani mountain camp. Um, it's a beautiful, well-known little camp in, um, in Damara land. What I absolutely love about it, and you can see here, is how they've built the tents um, right into these massive granite boulders. So uh, they've got 15 tents in this area, in, 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 the, in the lodge, each of them with canvas walls and a beautiful thatched roof. And I think what is the most exquisite thing about this lodge is you can see the absolutely magnificent views. Um, they have the most beautiful sundowner deck where you can sit and watch, uh, watch the sun going down over this valley. Um, activities in and around this area uh, is um, there's, a, there's a lot of different things one can do. So first of all, Teufelfontein. You can see in the top left hand side here, uh, Teufelfontein is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 2007. There are approximately 2,500 San uh, rock art paintings in this area, uh, which is quite an extraordinary number for, for, a, for a, a relatively small area. Most of them depicting wildlife or, or hunting. Um, and so this is from a, from a historical perspective, um, as I mentioned, now uh, registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, this is taken from the Brundtberg. The Brundtberg is the highest mountain range in the area and just offers the most beautiful scenic um, uh, photographs. And then in the bottom right hand corner here, it's also very well known for in this area for what they call the petrified forest. So. Um, the petrified forest, in fact, is uh, these uh, large sort of wooden tree trunks that they found, which um, they believe are about 280 million years old. And in fact, they've traced them back to uh, trees that were found once upon a time in the European region. So they believe that these tree trunks actually were carried down by a river, that there was no forest here in the, in the area. But in the Ice Age, they, they were carried down by, um, by rivers. Um, and because of all the mud that was put on top of them, they've been um, preserved beautifully. So also just uh, very interesting to see in the area. Uh, from um, from Mwani Mountain Camp, 
Uh, one can also go looking for the, the desert elephant. I did mention this, I think, last week or the week before, um, that it, right up in the northern region here, uh, this area is particularly well known for the desert adapted elephant. Um, amazing that in such a dry desert landscape, you can find uh, lion and elephant in this area along with other game. Um, and I'll show you a video a little bit later just of uh, this, the, this incredible area. And then a lot of walking trails in and around this area. Um, so it really does offer quite a, um, quite a lot of unique uh, features um, and really beautiful area to visit. So from here, uh, we're going to drive a further sort of four to five hours in a uh, north, northern, northwesterly direction towards Hohenab Valley Camp. So this is um, and it, it really in a totally remote area of uh, Koaka land. This borders on sort of Koaka land and Damara land. Um, it has six tents and in fact it's a uh, it's a coalition between the local community in the area, um, as well as the Giraffe Conservation Project, uh, making it a really interesting area to visit. Um, this video actually is the same video that Julian was showing earlier, but I think I'm just going to show it for those people who missed it right in the beginning, because it gives a really good indication of the landscape in this region. difficult to try and explain um, the vastness of this area and the terrain of this area um, to people. It, it's just, you know, the, the absolute tranquility um, when you're there and this 
huge vast openness of the terrain and the massive skies around you and the the rock formations are just absolutely incredible actually to to to, to watch and i think um you know it's really just about immersing yourself totally in this desert landscape um so as i mentioned um earlier the activities that one would do here um would be the the desert elephant um game drives you can also go rhino tracking on foot in this area um walking it's all about really immersing yourself in this total tranquility of this of this peaceful desert landscape i did also mention that this is a joint venture between uh, the local communities and the giraffe conservation project so I think let me speak a little bit more about the Himba tribe. The Himba tribe, um, when you speak about northern Namibia, um, is the one sort of thing that everyone that, ev that 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 comes to mind, and that many many people want to uh, visit the Himba tribes because of uh, the, the the beauty of these um, of these people. And you can um, you can just see here so many photographs that you would have seen um, sort of taken here on the. The, the right hand picture here. So the Himba are a nomadic tribe that moved over the border from Angola many centuries ago. Um, obviously due to sort of modern civilization, many of them are now living more in communities and in villages as opposed to being totally nomadic, but traditionally they are a totally nomadic tribe that, um, you know, that, are, that sort of wandered towards wherever they can find the water. Um, they obviously have livestock. And uh, the one thing the Himba are known for is their, um, their jewelry and their sort of adornments. They, uh, they uh, adorn their bodies in, um, in, a, in, a, in a special uh, um, sort of uh, mud that, and type thing that, that acts as a natural sunscreen and gives them this beautiful reddish you know, color. Um, they really are beautiful to photograph and um, an incredible community. So you can go and visit the Himba um, communities and uh, with small groups, with a guide, only with a guide, um, and really learn about, you can imagine that their knowledge on the area, their knowledge on the landscape is just so incredible and they've got so much to share. Um, on their traditions. They've got very, very strong traditions, um, which is really also so interesting to learn about. So that's something that most people really are very interested in at some stage, being in the north, visiting a Himba community. So just going back, I'd like to always show you where we've traveled. So we've gone from Swakopmund up to the Brandberg area and further north into Koaka land, right? That's in this area here. Um, now I'm going to take you up to the Kuneni River, and then we're going to go down to Etosha National Park. So again, totally different landscape, and I think that is what makes this northern region of Namibia so absolutely fascinating, is that the contrasts are just so incredible from your total um, dry, rocky, mountainous desert landscape. And the Koaka land in particular is really known for that. The vastness and the mountains and the dry riverbeds um, are really, really unique. And then suddenly we come up to the border of the Namibia, of Namibia and Angola, and along that border is the, the Kuneni River. So there are quite a few lodges um, along this river, and there are two sets of waterfalls. There's the Ruakana Falls and the Epupa Falls. Um, Kuneni River Lodge is slightly closer to the, is close to the Ruakana Falls. Um, these are not, for those of you who sort of came with us to Zimbabwe, these are not the Victoria Falls by any manner of means. But I think here it's just the incredible striking contrast of having these waterfalls in this river literally surrounded by the desert landscape um, around it. Just, it just makes for some really interesting landscape photography. Um, so activities in and around Kuneni River Lodge would really revolve around walking, lots of walks, um, you know, to, to the, along the river, along the river, uh, walks to the waterfalls. You can also go and visit the Himba communities from this, these areas. So they do take you on, um, on morning or afternoon trips to visit the Himba communities. And then of course, uh, 
There's canoeing on the river as well as whitewater rafting. So whitewater rafting, depending on where you are on the river, can sort of go from just a sort of a half day, two to three hour trip, um, right up to a four day whitewater rafting excursion down, um, down the Kunani River, uh, which is obviously, you know, going down uh, quite a lot of rapids as well. Um, but certainly depending on your level, you don't need prior experience and depending on whether you're just wanting sort of a gentle cruise down the river um, or whether you're wanting something a little bit more adventurous, uh, there are different trips um, for different sort of different styles of coming down the river. Kuneni River Lodge has got the most beautiful deck literally which is built out over the river. It's a beautiful place just to sit and watch the sunset. Um, you know, just to, to sit and watch the stars at night. It, it really is a gorgeous spot. Right, so coming down to Etosha National Park. Etosha is Namibia's most well-known national park. Um, and it's probably the most, it, what it's most known for is its massive salt pan. So the salt pan can be seen from space. It's about 4,800 square kilometers and it's about 25% of the size of Etosha. Um, it's a dry clay pan during the summer rainfall times. There, there is some water in this pan and that attracts massive amount of bird life, particularly flamingos. There can be thousands of flamingos over the rainy season um, in, this, in this clay pan. Um, they all come in search of the, the, nu the nutrient rich um, sort of clay in this, in this area. But I think what makes Etosha so unique is um, the fact that the landscape around here is so open and so dry. So we have four of the big five in Etosha. You will find elephant, lion, leopard, um, and uh, rhino. They don't have buffalo here. Um, and of course, you will find cheetah and hyena, many giraffe, and lots of plains game. And this picture down in the right here is such a typical picture of one of, of a waterhole in Etosha. So, of course, everything in Etosha revolves around the waterholes. Um, the game literally moved towards the waterholes um, throughout the day, coming down to the waterholes to drink um, because there is no sort of other natural water around. Um, and many of the lodges within that are situated within Etosha National Park are built around these waterholes, making them really incredible. You know, you don't even need to go out on a game drive because really the game comes to you. And this, you know, I always say this sort of picture here of the elephants and the zebra and the giraffe and everything sort of in one space is, is, a, is very, very typical of, of game viewing in the Etosha National Park. So I'm going to uh, take you to two different lodges today. The one is Ongava Lodge. The reason that's just the reason that I've chosen these two lodges in particular, in fact, is because both of them have great photographic hides. Um, so Ongava Lodge is situated in a private uh, reserve um, on the southwestern corner or the, of, of uh, Etosha National Park. Um, and um, you can see, I think what, what, what I love about Ngava is, um, is the fact that it's situated here, you can see right over a waterhole. So you don't really need to go far. You can literally be sitting and watching the, 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 the game come to you. Um, they have got great game viewing in the area, but they also do day trips. They've got their own access into Etosha National Park. So they'll take you into Etosha for day trips into the park. Um, however, the game viewing on, the, in, on their reserve is also really great. Um, and these are pictures taken from their photographic hide. So you can see it's water level, the photographic hide. Um, and we've mentioned photographic hides before. I think it just really gives you an amazing ability to get really up close to the game and to be able to photograph them sort of at eye level as opposed to looking down. Um, looking down on the game is really unique. This picture here on the right hand corner is the Black Fest Springbok, which is quite unique to this, um, to this area. Um, and uh, yeah, just a, just a really, really beautiful lodge um, with a great hide around the waterhole. The other one that I wanted to take you to is Onguma. Onguma is on the uh, eastern side of Etosha. Again, a, a private reserve. Um, bordering right on Etosha National Park. 
They've got five different lodges on the Onguma Reserve. The one that I'm going to tell you about today is Onguma Tented Camp. This has got seven tents, absolutely beautifully done in, inside. Um, and again here, what is what are really great about, um, about this is that every room, the, the whole lodge is literally built around the waterhole. So whether you are sitting on the deck, whether you're sitting in the swimming pool, or whether you're sitting in your, you know, on your veranda of your tent, everything is built around the waterhole. So you really don't really need to go anywhere. They've also got a great hide called the Oncolo hide. Um, these are just some pictures taken from the hide. Um, and again, you know, it's really, I think the thing about Itoshi is the game comes to you, which just makes it quite a unique destination to be in. Definitely recommend two to three nights in Itoshi National Park. Um, it's definitely not a one night stop. I always say three nights is ideal in any of the lodge destinations. Yeah, I second that, okay. uh, Nikki. Yeah, I think that yeah. uh, Itosha, even if you stay a week, you could uh, actually do quite a lot of uh, different kinds of photography there. You know, uh, like what you say, uh, it's quite good that uh, you can go out for your game drives and then you just come back and uh, chill, for example, by the pool or by anywhere and you get uh, the view of the animals coming for the water, you know, and you'll be able to get your shots. So this is a, a place where you can literally do your photography for a long, long time. Uh, doing so much pictures that, uh, you know, until you get sick of photography in a way. <laughs> yeah, so we have a question also from Derek. Derek is uh, asking if, um, is it possible to go on foot for game viewing in this area? Uh, not if you stay inside the park, no. But if you stay in the private reserves, yes. They mm. do do game viewing on foot. Right. And the private reserves, you can also do night game drives, right? If you That's correct, yeah. yeah. So I think we covered that a little bit, didn't we, when we did South Africa, in fact, sort of the difference. Um, so in the private reserves, there's, you know, there's a lot less restrictions. So you can do night game drives, you can do walking safaris, you can do rhino tracking on foot. Um, it, it gives you a lot more flexibility. If you're staying in the park itself, you need to be back. Normally right. by six o'clock at night, you need to be, so you can go out on your game drives during the day, but by dusk, you need to be back in camp. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that I did mention, so the, sorry, the, the, probably the three most um, well-known camps in Itosha are Okakuyo, Namutoni, and Hulali, all three really well-known um, camps within the park. And the great feature about all of these is that they built a, also on a waterhole. It's a floodlit waterhole, so you can really go and sit at night and watch the game coming down, which also makes it fantastic. Right. So even though you can't be out in uh, after dark, mm. you can you can certainly sit around the waterholes. Right. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. Let's, let's continue. Any other questions? Uh, no, that's all for now. And uh, if you folks have any questions, please kindly key them into the chat, and we'll pick it up. Okay, as we go along. All right, okay. yeah, let's proceed. So I wanted to come back to the map again, just to show you where we're heading off now. So uh, we've discussed Ongava and um, and the, the, the lodges in Itosha. So here you have a choice now between coming back down to Bintuk, which is what the majority of people do. Um, they, they leave uh, Itosha and they come down to Bintuk. This is about a five, and a five to six hour drive, depending on um, stops uh, along the route. There's a lot of beautiful crafts in this area that you can stop on, on the road, Arts and Crafts Markets. Um, but for today, what I'm going to do is instead of taking you back down to, down to Bintuk, I wanted to just take you into the Caprivi Strip again to show you you know, for me, it's just incredible that we can have a, a country that has got such incredible diversity. So what I first wanted to mention is it's it's too far a drive to get all the way through here in one day. So I'm going to take you up to Rundu first, and then we're going to go into the Caprivi. So Rund, at Rundu, um, uh, we normally use Hakusemba River Lodge, uh, close to just 16 kilometers outside of Rundu and situated again right on the river. Um, it's a beautiful uh, beautiful lodge with 20 rooms. Um, the activities one would do here are very much revolved around fishing. 
Um, and it's an incredible bird watching area. So if there are birders amongst you, there are at least, they've, they've, uh, they say there's about 300 endemic species, um, bird species that are found that are in this area. So it's really a fantastic um, bird watching area. They take you out on birding safaris early in the morning with uh, specialist birding guides for those of you who are interested in birding. Um, as I mentioned, fishing. And then of course, just cruising down um, the river on sundowner cruises, canoeing. Um, and, and really just, it's a great place to just be and relax. Again, it's just quiet, it's tranquil, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, perhaps just one thing to mention because I, uh, um, that I just thought about now, uh, both the, this whole area is not a river that you can swim in. There are crocodiles and hippos in the area. Um, so it's definitely not an area to be swimming in the river. Okay. Um, and right, then I'm going to take you right across the Caprivi to Num Numbwa Tented Lodge. So this is a beautiful um, tented camp and it's built right up into the treetops. So uh, there are, um, I think, 16 tents at, or 10 tents at, at Numbwa and each of them is built right up in the trees um, and connected by these beautiful wooden walkways. So the whole idea when they built this lodge was this is a natural elephant corridor and they didn't want to interrupt the elephant corridor. So what they did is they built the whole lodge up in the trees so that the elephants can still walk naturally through the elephant corridor underneath the, um, underneath the walkway. So really quite a unique structure. Um, and of course, it just, I mean, the views from these, um, you know, from the tents are just absolutely incredible across the floodplains. Uh, really, really beautiful. The main area um, has got the most gorgeous deck, which has which got incredible views. Everything here, as, as is really in Namibia, everything in Namibia is very much done outdoors. So your dining will be outdoor dining. Um, everything is really revolved around you being able to feel that expansive environment, to really be able to see the stars at night um, and to, to get a feeling of that massive space around you, which is what makes Namibia so totally unique. Uh, these are really beautiful, beautiful tents and I'm going to show you a video now. Um, and of course, the activities um, here around the around this area revolve around. You can do game drives, a lot of water-based activities, so river cruises, birding. Of course, is absolutely exceptional again in this area. Um, so I thought I would end off again by showing you a um, a video on uh, on Namwa. Um, and I think what makes, why I wanted to show you a video here, as well as the one on Hoenn of Desert Camp, is again, just to show you, you know, you're going to see now the one really is such a reflection of the desert landscape of Namibia. And here, you know, for those of you who've kind of followed us through Botswana, you will get a feel of a little bit like being in the Okavango Delta again. So it's a country that really offers um, such variety in, in, um, in, in all the different regions that you travel through. So I'm going to show you this video.
just going to um, mention Akonjima to you as well. Um, Akonjima is a, a lodge in between um, Itosha and Vintuk. Um, so I mentioned to you for some people, those are not going to go into Caprivi, they would come down from um, Itosha down to Vintuk. And Akonjima is a nature reserve, but what they're most well known for is the Africat Foundation. So the Africat Foundation is a conservation project looking after the cats, particularly, um, that were at one stage being hunted by the farmers in the region. So it really is to give them an area where they can, um, you know, where they can be in their natural territory. Um, and it's a really great lodge to sort of spend your last night um, on your way down between um, Itosha and heading back to Vintuk. So that is northern Namibia in a nutshell. Um, and uh, hopefully it's given you an idea of all the different landscapes that Namibia, that northern Namibia has to offer, as well as the incredible cultural experiences and wildlife experiences. So any questions? Yes, folks, if you've got any questions, please key them into the chat and we will pick them up, okay? And, uh, you know, Nikki, the area that you have covered, like the north, uh, when you look on the map, it doesn't look like it's a very, very big area. <laughs> you see? It right? is. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the, I think that's the challenge that most people have. Uh, they, they wouldn't really realize it until they get on like to Namibia oh. and then they start to drive and then they realize, oh, you know, why is it like I'm seeing this never ending landscape and then, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not getting to my next destination yet. Yeah. And yeah, I, sure, Julian. Yeah. And I understand the north is also harder to drive around, right? Because of the yeah. road conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have an so definitely... Yeah. This region that I've spoken about, and let me just maybe be clear about that. So mm. just to give you an idea, the different properties that we've covered today, you're looking at between, I'd say between four and five and a half hours driving time between each of these properties. Um, and the further north that you go, specifically in the Coacaland region, um, which is right up in that northwestern region between the Kuneni River, right up in the north, and Damara land, and sort of right up against the Skeleton Coast region, is very remote. So, the, so it's really remote. I mean, I think that is what makes it so absolutely beautiful. It's a totally true wilderness area, mm. um, and but the roads are, you know, for example, the road up to the Kuneni River is generally gravel road. Um, so from Apua, which is the last sort of town and um, before you head up to uh, the Kuneni River, the last sort of town where you can get supplies and where you can get petrol, it's about 180 kilometers um, of gravel road that will take you three to three and a half hours to get up to the Kuneni on that road. Hmm. So, you know, none of these places, which is why I say, for example, you would not go up there and spend one night because it's, you know, it's, um, it's just too far, you know, too far to drive on, on, on gravel road. So next week, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, some fly-in options as well. Mm -hmm. um, so for those people who've got a little bit less time, limited time, um, and obviously it, 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 um, a, a bit more of an ex extend, extended budget because it, um, some of them can be a bit more pricey because of the fly-in options. But that is a really great way to see Namibia if, um, if, you, if, you know, if you've got the budget and the time for it uh, or in the shorter time period. It is fantastic because you really get to fly into these most exclusive remote properties um, and just get that feeling. Also, just flying over Namibia is just incredible. Flying over this desert landscape um, and really getting an, a, a good feeling of the expanse of it is just so, so phenomenal. So what a lot of people do, and we'll have a look at that next week as well, is a lot of people do part, part of it as a self-drive and then they do extensions, um, flying extensions into, for example, the Skeleton Coast or you could fly into Caprivi. Um, area you could fly into um you know into Vic Falls even um it's a great what we that little trip that we did today is a really good combination to then end in Victoria Falls so from yeah. the Caprivi region where we looked at today the last video that I showed you from there it's very easy to get across to Kasani which is in Chobe National Park or the or the, the basically the border where the countries all meet where Zimbabwe 
uh, Namibia, Zambia, Botswana, that, yeah. that area, they all sort of meet there at Kazangula. Um, very easy to get across there. So really easy to combine that, for example, with Victoria Falls or wow. Toby, in fact. Okay. Um, so, we have the, so we'll look a little bit more at that next week. But yes, um, mm. to answer your, your question, Julian, definitely. I mean, what is really appealing here in the north is the remoteness of these areas, but one definitely has to realize that the distances are far. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then we have that question from Susie is asking what's like the nearest airport to the camps in Caprivi. Uh, that, that isn't an airport, just an airstrip, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so so yeah. some of the lodges have got their own private airstrip. Otherwise, Katima Malilo um, is uh, the, clo the 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 biggest airport um, in the Caprivi Strip is Katima. <clears throat> um, alternatively, if you're doing it as a combination, for example, with Victoria Falls or Kasani, you could even fly into Kasani, mm. which is on the Botswana side of the border, but you could cross over there. Right. So Nikki, uh, because it's so uh, similar to Botswana, for example, in terms of the uh, the offerings that you can get, they are almost similar, you know. So what about the price point? Are they similar to like Botswana? Because everyone knows that Botswana is like one of the most expensive destinations. But how about here in uh, Caprivi? Yeah, you know, I think the other thing that's um, great about Namibia, uh, which we haven't spoken about, but Namibia is um, quite interesting destination. And in that what they do is in, in a lot of these, um, a lot of these camps, they have a variety of accommodation options. Mm -hmm. So right from camping, because Namibia is a big sort of, a lot of people do um, overland sort of camping type safaris uh, with four by four um, vehicles. So they have camping options right up to sort of a more three-star option, right up to a five-star option, um, which is quite unique, actually. It's not in a lot of places, <coughs> excuse me, where you get all of those options at one lodge. Mm. So you find this quite a lot in Namibia, um, which is really nice because it means you can hit at various different price points. Um, and the same thing goes in the Caprivi. You know, you get some really well-priced um, lodges and then you get some that are obviously, you know, your, your higher end five star. I would definitely say from a price perspective, remember in Namibia, you, you are paying, uh, or the currency is the Namibian dollar. The Namibian dollar is common rated with the South African rand. Mm. Okay, so you're paying, you've definitely got major benefits on the exchange rate. Yeah. Um, whereas the moment you go into Botswana or Zimbabwe, you, you've got US dollar currency. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, definitely from a price perspective, uh, to stay on the Caprivi side is, is a more affordable price. Yeah. So just for our friends uh, on the call here today, roughly uh, the rate for, for this, this two weeks is about one sing dollar to 10.8 rand. Okay. So that's what you can change for. So it's like almost like one to eleven, yeah. That's the mm. like the rate, you know, which is uh, uh really really good uh, if you are spending fantastic, in, yeah. yeah, in Namibia or in South Africa, okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we have this question from JP. JP is then asking about the organization of the trip, and then uh, you know because uh, everyone have like limited time, and if we are looking at two weeks, would we then be covering north? And south or a mix. I believe that Nikki, you are going to uh, break that up next week uh, as a summary for our uh, for our session on Namibia. But uh, I guess just to also answer JP for now is that yes, when we are going to do a trip to Namibia, we will be doing the south and the north. But then uh, obviously we can't go to uh, everywhere and we can't go too far south, for example, or too far north. So it's still a loop around. But we'll have uh, really a lot of time for photography. You know, we'll wake up very early. We'll set off early. Uh, you will have your sunrise, sunset, and astro, and everything else under the sun. <laughs> yeah, so that's what the trip will be will be about. Yeah, so hope yeah. that answered your question. Yeah. Okay, do we have uh, more questions coming in from our friends here? Yeah. So the thing is that I also want uh, like to mention that Namibia is uh, one of the safest country that you can go to uh, post COVID, I believe, because of the 
the number of people in Namibia. You know, Namibia has one of the smallest population in the world with one of the largest land area. So if you really compare that, uh, I, I think they are number two. They are number two on the world scale, you know, in terms of uh, population versus like land mass. So number one yeah. is Mongolia. So they are, they are like number two. <laughs> Yeah, so if you if you have a good vehicle, uh, you enjoy driving, um, and you have like a spare driver, for example, that can rotate. Uh, you can actually do quite a bit of uh, of uh, moving around in Namibia. You know, yeah, yeah. and of course the areas where you uh, there's there's a lot of mixture of uh, things to shoot. You know, in terms of birds or in terms of like wildlife or even landscapes. Mm. Mm. Okay. Do we have uh, more questions coming in? Any questions, anyone? Yeah. So Nikki, we have done quite a bit. Uh, we have done like the, uh, what have we done? We've done the Southern part. We've done the Northern part. Next week, we'll be doing the fly-in safaris. Yeah. And then uh, we will we will also sum that up, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, sure. that will, so yeah. So, what so are we'll we do that on? next week. We'll give an hmm. indication because I know it's quite a lot to have taken in everything that we've covered. And I think, yes, it's quite overwhelming as to know how to combine this into two weeks because we've done a lot over the last hmm. sort of two weeks. So I will give you all a really good indication of what is really what is combinable um, into a two-week itinerary that's really going to give you the best of the country. Hmm. Yeah. And then after that, we will put it up on our website. And that's yep. what we are going to do. <laughs> Okay, right. Okay. Have we got any more questions? If not, we are just going to end this session in uh, probably a minute's time. And we are way on time today, Nikki. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Ah, I thought I okay. would uh, <coughs> I so, not have too much. I thought we'd run late today. <laughs> oh, you are you are gapsing your time uh, uh, you know very, very well. Yeah, and you are you are well aware of the time. So that is really, really good. Okay. And uh, Derek is asking, can we have a separate room for the 14 days? Like single supplement? A, a separate Zoom? Uh, a separate room. Uh, I think he's referring to, to room. Sorry, Zoom or room. <laughs> I think it's Zoom, I think. Room. Yeah. He's uh, referring to like maybe single supplement. Yeah. Uh, no, I think oh, he's referring so... to another webinar. Oh, um, another webinar. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, Derek, what I will do is next week, because I know this is something that a lot of people are interested in. Um, I'm going to focus, we'll split it. So we'll do half of it next week on the fly-ins, just to give you an idea of where, to, where one can go really remotely that one only can get by plane. But we will spend at least, uh, we'll try and spend half of it just discussing mm. um the, the itinerary that we'll do next year so for you guys yeah okay and if we feel that we need extra time on that then um you know we can we can uh we can see we can maybe fit in another one yeah okay, okay. i see somebody's Great. asking where we're going often after namibia <laughs> there we go <laughs> so where are we so, trying to <laughs> yeah where should we go <laughs> <laughs> maybe our friends can can tell us where would you want us to go Let's see some response. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah. see. Where do you want us to go? Chat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Where else? Where else? <laughs> oh, Chat is an interesting destination, you know, but uh, uh, not not many people is, uh, or not many agencies are actually doing that at this moment. Yeah. yeah. So because the situation could be quite volatile, but uh, Chat is uh, one of the best places in the world for astrophotography, you know, absolutely dark very very dark place yeah uh, so that's that's what it is but obviously in south africa you get that too you know like in southland yeah but the land uh, is very very that's dark true. and very good for for astrophotography okay and and actually all over i mean if you you know a lot of these camps that we've spoken to are just so um so remote you know that yeah. it's you, you, it's, namibia is incredible i mean there's just so little light pollution in namibia you know Mm, yeah. Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> Before it melts away. Yeah, you okay. can you can actually fly to Antarctica from uh, South Africa, you know, you go on the white desert. Uh yeah. And Nikki can arrange uh, for you to fly from South Africa to, to Antarctica. Yeah. So Kenya or Tanzania. Ah, there we go. Okay. 
Uh, and the other thing is so on, for, for chat, uh, it's a very, very expensive package because uh, technically there's nobody going there, you know, too much. And then uh, if you want like for a certain level of uh, comfort, uh, some of the packages can be like 15,000 US dollars or 17,000 US dollars, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. for like 15 days. So which is actually quite expensive. All right, Mauritius, Madagascar, Seychelles, yeah. But why nobody say South Africa? Oh, you know, this is disappointing. Okay. Uh, well, we've already done South Africa. We've we already done, done South Africa. Okay, and yes. a lot of these lovely people have been on board since day one for the last 14 weeks uh -huh. now. So, yes, so should we let them in? Should we tell yet. them where we're going next, Julian? <laughs> okay. Next, we are going... We are going <laughs> to... <laughs> we are going to Mozambique. Yeah, we'll be going to Mozambique first, right? Yeah, we'll be I'm in true. Mozambique for a week, okay? And then we will fly again, how about that, okay? So you just give a little intro to Mozambique so that you are aware of uh, also that country in the Southern African map, okay? And then uh, we will then move on to two other locations, which I will just keep it under wraps for now. We'll tell you <laughs> if you okay. attend. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. And then, yeah, some of these places uh, like Congo and all this, yeah, which is quite nice, but uh, it can be quite volatile, you know, and uh, we don't really recommend uh, uh, folks to go there, um, uh, you know, just, just for safety. Johnny yeah, English. and uh, there was actually once where I was actually prepared to go to Congo and I had to cancel for the at the very last minute because of uh, there was some silver war and things like that, you know. Yeah, so I, I wanted to go and see the lowland gorillas there. Yeah, but I couldn't I couldn't go. <laughs> okay, yeah. So okay. yeah. And uh we were yes, uh gradually as we go along, yeah, maybe the uh the part in East Africa like Kenya and Tanzania, we will definitely cover that. Yeah, and um we just have to uh Get get Nikki to start to work out her links in that area, and then uh, we can <laughs> we can work out something too. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I'll be. I mean, we'll be happy to. Uh, in fact, we are thinking of doing like a coffee chat session if you guys are interested. At some point in December, uh, maybe what we'll do is that we'll have a little session where you can you guys can come in. Uh, and of course, you can come in anytime and you can uh, drop out anytime, you know, it's just basically just for a chat. You, if you have questions then, okay, of uh, any of the sessions that we have covered so far, and maybe some of the other things that you'd like to find out a little bit more about Africa, uh, please come in and join us for those sessions, you know, bring your coffee along. Uh, yeah, or you can order some some coffee and send it to our place. Will be very much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or else uh, join us for those sessions, and then uh, you can come with your questions, and we'll help you with with them at the same time. So we are really happy to share about Africa with you. Okay, yeah. So uh, let's let's look out after that the fly in safaris uh, and the summary to Namibia, and then we'll cover Mozambique uh, the week after. Okay. Right, and um, are there any more questions? Okay, see our our friends are very, very active, which is excellent, yeah, that is what we want to see. Any beer there? There we go, yeah. Uh, is that in the chat you? session? <laughs> <laughs> you can do beer or coffee, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, if, if I could send a beer to you via Zoom, I would do that, yeah. <laughs> but I guess you just have to prepare your own, Derek, okay, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so um, I guess we don't have any more questions already. And then uh, I like to thank Nikki once again. You know, this is such a difficult topic to, to prepare because of the uh, immense amount of uh, information that uh, you have, especially, you know, uh, through this through these uh, sessions, there were so many of them. Uh, and, and every week, you know, you have to look out for, for new things to present in terms of like the, the pictures and also the information and stuff like that. So uh, really, thank you so much. Thank you on behalf of everyone here. And then uh, obviously we have to thank all our friends for coming in. Yeah. And I uh, hope to see you again next week. Okay. Yeah. And uh, have a great week ahead. Bye-bye. Okay. Till next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.